Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where we all know the cheetah is a pretty fast animal. But did you know it was also pretty good with a light gun, and could also help you protect your home micro? Because today we're checking out the Cheetah Defender. The Defender light gun was produced by Cheetah and was released in 1989. This version is for the 48k Spectrum, and there were versions for the 128 as well as the Amstrad models. And they even released one for the C64. The box itself is a little basic. We get a few marketing lines, and that's about it. The back is exactly the same as the front, and the sides just have those same notes on them. And is it just me, or does that image on the front look like it's a sticker? Now inside the box we get two items. We get a cassette with the packed in games, and the light gun itself. Which is far more stylized than some that we've seen. And it more looks like a sci-fi laser pistol than a regular gun, which I'm sure is what they were going for. As with most 8-bit light guns, there is a single trigger, which actually is quite nice and clicky, but doesn't take much to activate it, which I guess must have been that hair trigger the box was mentioning. There is this plastic tab along the top that you can move back and forth. Now I'm guessing this is to help you get your sights completely locked in. And there's also this switch on the other side, which is for the auto fire. Overall, it actually feels quite solid to hold and well put together which shouldn't be too much of a surprise as Cheetah had been making joysticks for quite a few years at this point. And at the end of the cable we get a DE9 joystick connector, which means we're going to have to use some form of add-on with the ZX Spectrum, with Cheetah really hoping that you'd go out and buy one of theirs. I'll be using the joystick port on my div MMC Enjoy as it works best out of all the options that I have. So that just connects to the Spectrum, which in this instance is my Spectrum Plus model, which has the best video output of my 48Ks, and the gun then connects to it. But before we get going, let's take a quick look at the cassette, as it has a proper case with a fold out manual. And it lets us know it was the Codemasters that made the games, which hopefully means it fares better than some of the collections as the Codemasters actually did some decent titles. And what seems to be a common theme, there are six games for us to check out. And the foldout tells us how we can play each of the games. Now one minor annoyance is that there's three games per side, and they don't indicate where the later games start on the cassette. So it might take a bit of trial and error for you to find them. So let's start with Billy the Kid, which greets us with this very basic title screen. There are no options and no way to calibrate the light gun itself, so they must have been pretty sure of its quality. So all we can really do is just start the game, which drops us into that old light gun staple, the shooting gallery. The various objects are worth different amounts of points, with the thrown can being worth the most. And there's a few extra points if you manage to keep hitting that flying can. Overall, it seems the light gun is relatively accurate but only if you're much closer to the screen than most systems that we've tried out so far. It could be that that was always the case, or that the light gun needs a bit of servicing. But after a bit of trial and error, I got it to work quite consistently. And if we're good at this game and don't miss too often, which will actually dock you points, then we'll make it to the next level. Which is another gallery, but this time you're taking aim at people at a bank when they pop up in the windows. You have limited ammo, and you also have to avoid hitting the ladies that show up. It's definitely not the most complex variant of this type of game that we've seen. Though it seems as we're playing Billy the Kid, it's more of a case of us trying to get away from the bank than trying to save anyone. And this idea of us being an outlaw is taken to its natural conclusion in the third mode, as it's a quick draw. Where you should place the gun by your side and take five steps, turn and shoot. Well, there isn't enough room in here to do that, so let's just place the gun down by our side and count to five instead. And with that done, we're back at the first game, just with a higher score to beat. And at this point we realise we've seen all this game has to offer. It's just the three modes on loop getting harder each time. It's not a bad game, but quite basic and very common for these sort of bundles. 
let's move on to something a little unique with F-16 Fighting Falcon, an afterburner clone that uses a light gun, well that is a little different. The game itself is quite basic, you have to fly around shooting down the enemy planes, all while trying to dodge incoming fire that might be coming from the air or the ground. Now with the light gun, things get a little different. You now get to directly aim at the enemy fighters to take them out. And you have to actually shoot at your own plane to make what as the manual puts it, take automatic intelligent evasive action. Which mostly seems to be fly the plane to the left in my experience. It's a cool idea, though the speed that everything happens at means it's not the easiest game to play. And having the game decide which direction you move in isn't the best either. More so when it feels like it takes up precious ammo to do so. There are four levels in total, though it seems it's really just one level that they changed the attribute colours to make it seem different, but it is quite nicely animated and has some good sound effects. And I have to say, it is quite nice when it's not the same old type of games on these collections. And while it might feel like this game was actually changed to work with the light gun, it seems it was actually an original title made just for it. Next up is Bronx Street Cop, which takes us right back into familiar territory. Again, we start off with a shooting range. But this time there's also targets that you have to avoid, which are these grannies. Or at least that's what I think they are anyway. Hit them and you'll take a major penalty to your score. Which is a real pain as the other targets show up at random, so it can be quite hard to reach the required score goal. As not only are you up against time, but you also have a limited number of bullets to use. Thankfully it seems you can hit some of the targets multiple times to get more points, but that is balanced out by the fact that some of those friendly targets might just stick around on screen for what seems like an absolute age. But if you beat the score, you get to hit the streets. Which means having to take out baddies that show up in windows and doors, and again having to avoid hitting those grannies, who really do seem to want to know what's going on outside, as they will show up in great numbers. If you do accidentally hit them, you do get a number of free hits if you will, as you'll be told off for injuring them, but if you do it too often, then you'll end up killing them instead and it's an instant game over. Also don't think those baddies are just passive, as they will randomly shoot back at you if you fail to take them down quick enough. Now the first few times this happens you do get to continue, but let it happen enough times and again it's game over. Now if you take down the specified number of targets, you get to do it all over again, but this time it's down in the subway. I have to say the graphics are actually quite nice, it's detailed with some nice colour work going on, even if the targets themselves are still monochrome, which does make identifying them a little tricky. But it is still nice to see devs using lots of colour on the spectrum, and after this point in the game there really isn't much left of it. There's the advanced training, which adds clay pigeons that fly across the screen, and one last level, which doesn't add any moving targets so that advanced training feels a little pointless. So it's not the longest game or the most original, but still decent enough. Next up is something completely different, Advanced Pinball Simulator. Yep, that name really cements that this is a Codemasters collection. And yes, this is honestly a pinball game that uses a light gun. And on the main menu you have to shoot at the buttons to change the game mode and then again to start. And when you're in game and it's ready to go, you have to hold down the trigger to launch the ball. And then you have to shoot the targets on either side of the screen to move the paddles. It's completely bonkers and stupid, but somehow it just about works. Yes, it's really fiddly, and it's very annoying when you happen to miss the button because you had to move quickly, but the overall slow movement of the ball doesn't make it as bad as you might expect. The game, for those who don't know, is pretty much a port or retooling 
of the original Advanced Pinball Simulator by the Codemasters. And as far as I can tell, nothing was added. It's still just the single table. But they have removed the audio. I'm not sure if they needed the round for the light gun, or if they couldn't fit it on the tape. But either way, it does make the whole thing feel a little off. Now, I like my pinball games, but this isn't one that I would be quick to return to. It might have been better if the targets were larger, or if they made something a little bit more custom that made you use the light gun for table games. Jungle Warfare, on the other hand, is right back to classic light gun land. Where we have a scrolling shoot 'em up in the mold of Operation Wolf. Now there's lots to shoot at, including jeeps, baddies, tanks, and boats, and typically a few shots will take them down, but you do have to be careful of those that fire rockets, as those seem to be a little tricky to hit. As is normal with the case of these games, you have limited ammo, and you have to shoot boxes in the level to get more. And it is quite amazing that so many of the games that we've played so far have limited ammo, as it makes that auto fire switch on the Defender a little bit redundant. This is definitely one of those games that would have benefited from using the auto fire, but the very limited amount of ammo that you get really does not make that an option as it is very easy to run out if you're not careful. There's also this other common issue with all these games, in that they don't show you where your missing shots are hitting, so it can be a little hard to self-calibrate if you feel like your targeting is off. There are six levels to the game, with them overall having some nice use of colour, as well as some smooth scrolling, which is always good to see on the spectrum. But again, this isn't a game that will take you very long once you get good at it. And finally, we come on to Supercar Trans Am, which is a racing game that uses the light gun to steer. Which, as you can imagine, doesn't work all that well. The Trans Am will move automatically up the screen, and you have to shoot the arrows to the left and right to move the car. Now you have to try and get round the various obstacles on the track, while also making sure you don't get hit by the other cars. Which can be much harder than it sounds. And if you manage to do all that and get to the end of the level, well, you get to go on and do another one. And there are several more levels that have their own nice detailed graphics and colour sets for you to challenge yourself with. But really, it's just trying to avoid stuff while also trying to get your car to move in the right direction and then getting stuck behind something that you really thought you could have got past. Though occasionally you will have to target your car, as that will put it into reverse. Which you might need to do if you miss one of those jumps, as these turn out to be the only way you can get past some of those screen filling barriers that you will come across. Now I do like out of the box thinking when it comes to light gun games, and this one certainly is that but the control method really does not work all that great. Perhaps they had you trying to target stuff on the screen to get obstacles out of the way or something, it might have been a bit more interesting, but as it is, it's not a particularly fun game to play. Though this is Codemasters doing what they do best, produce a number of smaller but relatively well polished games, and then adapt a few older ones to a new format. I'm not sure all of them worked, as I think Pinball was not crying out to be paired with a light gun, but it is interesting at least, and stands out against some of the quick draw and shooting galleries that we tend to get with these devices. Some of the games actually even got updated a few years later to work with the other light guns, as well as get regular keyboard and joystick controls as well. So that was easily one of the more fun bundles we've seen so far for a light gun, and it does make you wonder what other games could be adapted to work with it as well. 
So if you have any ideas, or if you had one of these back in the day, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. So until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was a Defending Cheetah, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can let me know down in the comments, or you can use those buttons just below, you know the ones I mean. Or if you're not sure yet, then you can check out two other videos that I've done that are on the screen right now. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.